A greenhouse is a really valuable tool here in Tasmania because you can use it in winter. When the weather is really unpleasant, as you can probably hear outside, I can come in here and still garden and grow things. It doesn't get so cold that it makes it impossible to grow here in Tassie, but the things that are outside are not going to move at the same pace. So here I have planted some broccoli and some spinach. Now while I have those outside as well, outside they're simply not going to grow at the same rate. And so these that I've planted will probably overtake them and I'll harvest these before or around the same time as the, those out there but probably before from past experience even though they were planted about a month ago you can use a greenhouse also in summer to expand the range like here in a cool climate we grow things like sweet potatoes as you've seen and also cucumbers do better in the warmer environment of a greenhouse this is actually the second edition of this greenhouse that i've built the first one was built out of poles, out of the forest. Simply what I had available, it was really, really cheap to build. The only thing that was purchased was the plastic and a few nails. It lasted 14 years, which was pretty good. The poles were the things that let it down because they ended up rotting in the soil and starting to fall apart. And that broke the plastic apart and it came to an end. So I rebuilt with, again, the material that I had available to me. This metal frame was from my father-in-law and he had had a previous tomato growing business and he had all these frames available, which he offered to me. I had to do a fair bit of cutting and welding to build it to the same size and shape because of the footprint that I had. This one, the frame is certainly going to last a lot longer than the previous one, but the plastic, it usually only lasts around 10 years. If you can get more than 10 years, you're doing really, really well. The plastic I've used on this one is one called Durotuff and it's really, really good stuff. I will be surprised if I don't get the 10 years out of it because of how good it is. But if I hadn't had these materials available to me, my choice probably would have been to build a polytunnel type greenhouse because they're fairly cheap and easy to build and still work just as effectively. Yeah, if you have it available, you can use glass really it's simply a matter of using what you have available to get some warmth and some shelter from the environment once you have that you have a place where you can start experimenting and growing a lot greater variety of foods again this year I'm experimenting with potatoes I've planted in this bed potatoes in the soil this year last year I tried growing them in straw bale but I wasn't really happy with that result so I've decided to compare it and put them into the soil with compost this year and see how that goes. Hopefully it'll give me a better result, but time will tell. There are two design factors that I've incorporated into both versions of this greenhouse. And I recommend them to anyone building a greenhouse, no matter what type it is. The first was to actually raise the plastic off the ground level and put the attachment point up higher. Using corrugated iron below, if you wanted the light still coming in here, you could use polycarbonate, but I don't really find that this matters. The light comes from above anyway. But raising the uh, attachment for the plastic off the ground means that if you're working around with tools, you're far less likely to damage your plastic, and that is going to extend the life of your plastic. The other factor is that you can then also bring your raised beds up against the walls without any problem. The second factor is to always use something in between the frame of the greenhouse and the plastic. Now in this one I've used a special tape that you can buy. In the previous one where I had the logs I used some plastic itself, some of the greenhouse plastic that was actually nailed onto the log and what that meant was that the outside sheeting was able to slide smoothly over the timber without any abrasive factors coming into play and so it didn't wear the plastic when the wind was blowing. This tape that is in here achieves the same end. It's also very important if you have your plastic directly in contact with a metal frame 
or with a, a polythene frame which could become very hot on a sunny day that you have something in between it that is going to insulate because that heat will reduce the life of your plastic sheeting. Now I still have this bed which I haven't planted in yet and outside I've got some volunteer lettuce coming up. It will grow outside but it'll do a lot better in here and grow a lot faster. So I'm going to go out there now and brave some of that weather and bring some plants in and put in here and they will give me some nice greens a lot earlier than if I left them outside. Of course when you've moved plants like this don't forget to water them in really really well and it's good to give them a little press around too so that the roots settle in nice and firmly and don't forget also to come back over the next few days every day and give them more water so that they settle in nicely so that's just a few of the ways I use my greenhouse to extend my growing season and to grow things across a wider range and to get better production over winter so hopefully that encourages you to get building, build one too, and put it to use.